Hey everyone, so it's a windy Sunday morning and uh, I was just doing some editing, that's what I do with Sundays and uh, I discovered some old footage I had of the wind turbine that I never put out just completely forgot about it so I thought I'd uh, put it out there because it's quite good footage actually uh, wind turbine calculations of efficiency and stuff um, and the wind turbine's currently going as well so that's what reminded me of it so yeah show you a bit of old footage it's not from that long ago I think it was uh, I think it was in the summer so yeah put it on there now hey everyone so we've got some uh, pretty good winds today I don't know if you can see all the uh, trees rustling around behind me there but it's uh, lovely weather but really windy I thought we could do a um, like a do a power curve of the wind turbine so I've got two radios and I'm gonna set the camera up watching the power output I'm gonna read out the wind speeds from a wind meter right under the turbine and then we'll lay that out on a graph and uh, see exactly what it's producing and what wind speed. All right, let's get to it. All right, so I'm going to go out there with the radio and uh, read out some wind speeds and we can plot them on a graph. I'm going to do that again, see if we can see slightly higher output from it. It seemed to work quite well, so I'm going to stand up there, see if we can see more than 16 miles an hour. Okay, a little bit of footage of the turbine itself. When you get a gust, you'll hear that it makes like a whirring sound, like a deep rumble. Once it does that, it's going past 500 watts. So you hear it here probably. Let's do some wind speeds for you. Oh. Do it from behind the turbine, you'll be able to see the turbine as well. Fortunately, we're a little bit lower than the turbine. working so well though it's not quite perfectly balanced but it works really well and it changes sound as you walk around it. it goes quiet when you're in line with it you don't like standing there too long though. seven eight on the way back to have a look at the uh, numbers and stuff days like this are a bit crazy really so I've got now 2,000 watts of solar coming in and you know 300 or so average off the turbine uh, it's really a lot of power and uh, I struggle to use it all so I've got lights on and everything and and uh, in the workshop and I don't actually have many lights in here unfortunately if I had more lights in there I'd have them all on too uh, but yeah I'm just trying to burn power the hot water's on 
um, lights on everywhere. I've got the incubator on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just trying to waste power. Really. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go over these numbers, have a look at them, and uh, we'll plot them out on a little graph. All right, let's do it. Okay, so I've done a little graph of um, of the readings I got. So some of these numbers don't make um, that much sense, to be honest. Uh, I'm pretty sure I know the reason why. Uh, that's the ones that have a question mark. Now, for example, the wind turbine starts to make power at about 6 miles an hour, but the reading I was getting was around 100 watts at 6 miles an hour, which is impossible for that to be true. That literally can't be true. Um, the turbine, the wind turbine would have to be more efficient than it is physically possible for it to be to do that number. So obviously there's something wrong there. Um, what it was is that the turbine is, is up slightly higher and has a big area and it was catching the wind and speeding up much faster than the, uh, than the wind meter was. So the turbine was always ahead of the wind meter. So when I was getting six miles an hour on the wind meter, the turbine was already racing ahead and it was already at you know, something higher than that. So these ones with a question mark are all like that. So I don't think that they're wrong as such. I think the gain in them is fairly accurate because um, it, it looks quite right uh, because it's you know lower down we've got these this this lower output um, in the lower ranges as it's overcoming the losses in the turbine and in the blades and whatever else and then it starts to overcome those office losses and make more power and get into a more efficient range so I think the way they're staggered looks quite accurate I think they'd all just be a little bit further down um, I think we were behind them a little bit with the meter um, so yeah so on the side here we've got hundreds of watts and along the bottom obviously miles per hour uh, wind speed uh, so yeah, those first ones um, can't give you an efficiency of them, and I don't think those readings are accurate. Those readings would all be stepped down quite a bit. Um, but once we get up to like uh, 14, 16, 19 miles an hour, things start to make a bit more sense because the wind speeds are a bit more stable at that because all down here is going from nothing and then building up and building up and building up and you're chasing it, trying to quickly read out you know the the figures and and trying to make sense of it it wasn't really working but 14 16 19 those were fairly consistent readings and i got a lot of them and it, you know that it was sustained wind at that speed for for quite a while you know at least a few seconds anyway i was able to get fairly accurate readings so 14 miles an hour we've got around what are we at uh, nearly 400 watts, like 380 watts, something like that, at 14 miles an hour, and we're at 34% efficiency. So that's the most efficient the turbine is running, or is going to run in this test anyway. Uh, it was at 34%. It might have been slightly more efficient at 12 if I could have got an accurate reading, but I couldn't really. Um, but yeah, 34% we're running at, at 14 miles per hour. Uh, then at 16 miles per hour, per hour, obviously we've got significant more amount of energy available in the wind now because the difference between 14 and 16 is vast. Um, so now we've got a lot more energy available in the wind, but the efficiency is just starting to drop off. Lost a couple of percent, but we gained a lot of energy. So, you know, we gained a lot of extra power there. We've gone from you know, nearly 400 to over 500, 520 or so, but we lost a couple of percent. Um, points of uh, efficiency so that's a really nice speed for that turbine to work at because we're getting in a really nice amount of power you know over 500 watts and we've, we're not losing too much to heat because we're at 31% which is good for a wind turbine the theoretical maximum is only, only uh, just under 50 so for a homemade turbine that is not a bad uh, amount of energy um, and they, bear in mind this isn't uh, the turbine efficiency this is the amount of energy that's actually going into the battery this is after the losses in the cable and whatever else um, so actually the actual turbine efficiency is is quite a number of percent higher than that because at that there's about 60 70 watts being lost in the cable alone um, then we get up to 19 miles an hour which obviously there's a significant difference between 16 and 19 the energy in the wind is going up drastically at this point um, and we do get a big rise in output. We're going from 520 odd watts right up to close to 700 watts. But as you can see, the efficiency has dropped right off again. So 
every time we, we're getting these gains, each time we're gaining loads more energy, but because of the cable losses, the um, energy that it takes, uh, and all the wind that the, that the um, blades are having to move out the way as, um, as they move through this mass of wind that's blowing through them, uh, we start to lose the efficiency. The efficiency starts dropping off. So now we're at 25%, a lot of heat being generated in the cable and in the rotor itself, and wind resistance on, on, the, on the blades. So we get loads more power, you know, right up to 700 watts, but the efficiency is dropping off. Once we get to 21 miles an hour, so from 19 to 21, it starts to get really interesting because we start to drop off even more on the efficiency. So even though the difference, again, massive difference in energy available in the wind, uh, but only a small gain. So we've only gained 100, 100 watts there, even though we should have gained, you know, many, many, many hundreds of watts in that difference in wind speed. But it's because now um, the efficiency is starting to drop right off. We're reaching really what this turbine uh, is really designed to do. Um, then we didn't see uh, 30 today, but I have, um, this is a prediction by the way, 30. I have seen 1100 watts off the turbine, and I believe that to have been around about a 30 mile an hour wind. And I know at that point it was starting to furl out of the wind, and it was it was really starting to struggle at that point. Like that was, that was its really its maximum, I think, that it, it wouldn't even want to sustain that for long with, before it got, you know, really rather hot. Um, and once we're up into that, you know, this is off the chart, this would be way up here, this, um, you know, it, so it's a lot of energy, but we're down to about 10% efficient at that point. Um, so like I say, we, we wouldn't really want to run it for any prolonged period of time uh, at that, uh, because things would get a bit hot, uh, but it does, it, it, it furls at that, so, um, so yeah, we, we might make it furl a bit earlier, considering that, after seeing this. Because um, at 10% efficiency, we're losing a lot of energy somewhere, and it has to be going into a lot of heat. So um, we might take a bit off the tail, make it furl a bit quicker. Um, like I said, there's not too much point really in it going much more than than about 900 kilowatt or something like that. Looking at these figures, so I think we might make it furl at about there. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I can't really get these accurate readings. I probably could if we had lower um, non-gusty winds. I can probably figure this lower part out a bit. Um, and I might redo this and post an update of that once I get suitable weather to, to get better readings there. You know, more consistent lower winds in these lower lower wind speeds. So yeah, there you go. That's the, uh, the old footage. I'll just take you up to uh, see the turbine as it stands now. There's the turbine as it stands at the moment. Um, I was doing some maintenance on it and I had a rope around the tail and I uh, the wind picked up and it whipped it round and it actually ripped the tail off so I had to weld the tail back on and while I was there I cut the tail down a bit so it actually furls out the wind a lot quicker now and I'll show you a clip of that actually now but yeah uh, all working fine and working great it's just slightly smaller tail just had some really big gusts of wind coming in just thought I'd get a bit of a video of the turbine furling. Ready to watch the tail. There she goes. Here it comes. Watch that tail. That's not it, that's just the change of wind direction. Here it comes. There she goes. Whoa. There's the tail furling out. So there we go, there's a little wind turbine update. Working well still, I'm surprised how well it works actually. And uh, it produces power for us on days when, you know, we don't have other power sources. Well, more so in the summer, this time of year we have loads of power, but in the summer less so. Um, and it tends to produce power uh, on those days that we don't have as much. So it is very useful to have, very good. And uh, in some ways we're kind of reliant on it uh, at certain days. So yeah, little uh, wind turbine update for you there. Uh, today I'm going to start the installing the wood stove in the workshop, so that is going to be the next video out after this one. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.